This is a PSA for idiots like me who decide to mark their fabric in Sharpie. Because you know what? Sometimes, sometimes you need to sew past your markings and you know what happens then? You have Sharpie on your final garment. Ugh! I'm going to recover all of the pins that I have stuck in this because my poor pin cushion, she is looking naked. She is she naked. We have to give her back her clothes. Ow, I stabbed myself on all these pins. You can't see my toesies. Look at Abby's beautiful furs. Hiya friends and welcome to an intro in my PJs because your girl is tired from going on vacation for two weeks. Raise your hand if you need a vacation from your vacation. One day I'll learn to not overbook myself, but today is not that day because we are editing and posting the video that you just clicked on. Thanks for thanks for hanging out. I hope I actually published it today. We're we're gonna see quite shortly. But welcome to Nami finally actually makes an 18th century sack gown. I was going to say Francais but I'm pretty sure I'm saying that wrong, so apologies in advance to the butchering of the French language. Thanks for joining me and let's dive right into it. So the very first thing that I am doing before I even start looking at my gown stuff is I am adding the last bottom to my pocket hoops. These pocket hoops have been done for years now, except only one of them was a pocket and the other was just a hoop. Your girl needs pockets at Versailles. That's that's it, that's the truth. So we're doing this first before anything, so I will have guaranteed pockets. I might not have clothes, but I will have pockets. This actually ended up being not quite true. These were way too flimsy for my needs. Oops. I tricked you guys with that previous clip by actually doing things right away, but uh, joke's on you. I'm back to no longer doing things and just uh, studying how to do the thing instead. Time to read the entire section about the sack gown in the American Duchess book again. I love this book. It's such a great resource. And then I'm going to, you know, read all the instructions on the J.P. Bryan's pattern for the sack gown because that is Christine's go-to for the fanciest of Watteau pleats. And I, I just, I need the fancy these pleats guys so we're gonna just do a lot of a lot of studying how to do the thing before I do the thing so then I can do the thing as fast as possible so that's my secret right it's not that I just work fast I work fast because I have overstudied how to do the thing so much and over planned it to the point that once I actually get my hands on the fabric it's like whoa, 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 let's go petticoat first though this is petticoat first start easy mode so this is she, this is the fabric that I'm going to be using for this gown. Uh, Christine kindly let me shop her stash for it and I'm just, I'm obsessed. I also, I'm like, this is like a silly little thing, but like this pattern here looks like kind of like, like, like a double helix if you squint and tilt your head. And as a genetics person, it like tickles my like secret nerdiness. And I just, I love this a lot. I love this fabric a lot. And Christine kindly let me shop her stash and buy this off of her at a discount. And I just, I just, what a, what a kind, what a kind, kind person. If y'all don't follow Christine, you guys should immediately because she's just, she's too good for this world. She's, she's just too good. But yeah, that, this is the fabric I'm going to use. And I'm going to start off with the easier task, which is I'm going to make the petticoat first because I took the measurement that I need for that. Let's go. Welcome to today's episode of Nami Wrestles with a Giant Amount of Fabric. So what's happening here is something along the lines of me pleating the petticoat and I ironed the fabric too before I did that, which is like pretty wild for me, honestly. And here's where I go completely off script and decide to start putting together the Watteau pleats in the back as well, because I'm like, hey, we have all these giant pieces of fabric out right now. Let's just Let's just do this too, why not? And I started hand tacking out of it and it actually is pretty painless. All right, so it's time for me to take a little break but we've gotten quite a lot done. Over there in a pile is the petticoat. It doesn't have waist ties yet because I do not know where my one inch wide twill tape has gone. This side of the pleats are all fully done down and this side is partially done down. So the two interior pleats here are finished and this one exterior pleat is done. And I have these three to sew down but I need a break. I need snacks. It is snack time. Also, this is the part where I technically now need to clean my sewing space because I have the rest of my American Duchess pattern for this gown somewhere, but I don't know where it is. And I need to find that if I want to make the rest of this. And I also need to find my twill tape. So, oh God, time to tackle all of that and that. And there's stuff over there and stuff under here. It's gonna, ugh. 
it'll be fine. This is fine. Look at Abby's beautiful furs. So see how thick this is? I think, I think maybe I do have all the pattern pieces I need in here and I'm gonna find the pieces for the lining because the lining, the bodice lining is what I need. I can make, my plan is to make the skirt front sections using the instructions in the AD book, but this, this lining, I need the pattern. I do not want to pattern this. I can pattern this, but I just, I don't want to. I don't want to. So great news, I found three pattern pieces that I needed and I ironed them like a good sewist inspired by Hey Lizard Lee who always irons their patterns like a nerd. I love them, don't. I love them. They're so meticulous and good and lovely and amazing. That said though, uh, I also kind of failed because I did need four pieces. I can't find this one, These the, the front, um, the bodice front. Welp, back to cleaning, I guess rip me. So I didn't find the front pattern piece, but I did find the Christmas sack gown that I was making earlier and it's made with the same exact pattern and thus it has these front pieces and um, this was previously sewed on. I just seam ripped it and I'm just going to use this piece as my pattern now, but I'm going to add like an extra inch, I think, to the center front edge because I feel like I feel like my my titty got bigger, so I, we gotta accommodate that. And yeah, I can make an extra large stomacher, but I'd rather just not have to do that from the beginning. Yep. I just did a very scary thing and ironed these pleats down further. So I have a bunch of pins in here because I was literally pinning it to my ironing board to keep everything like straight and stuff. And this fabric is really like, it's heavy. So it doesn't want to hold these like really crisp pleats this way. So I asked my friends what they would do. And Christine suggested that I iron the pleats down about a foot or so and then let it sort of swoosh out like it would normally do for the gown. So this isn't necessary on a lighter fabric because these pleats would kind of want to hold themselves, but it didn't want to hold in this fabric. So this is why I had to do this. This is also why Christine was not going to use this fabric to make a Francais. So she was going to make, well, I definitely said that wrong, but she was going to make like an Italian gown or something like that. And I was like, no, I'm going to do it in Francais anyway. And uh, here we are struggling, but it's fine. We did it. Scary part done. All right, we officially have the back waistband ribbon tie thingamajig on for the petticoat. And now time to do the front. That's it, that's what this update was. Welcome to the first fitting of actual clothing. Um, so this is how the bodice itself looks right now. It, she fits perfectly. Um, I YOLO added an inch to this side seam. So the side seam is actually like a side back seam, so it falls here. But so I added one inch on either side of the front pieces to that seam and uh, turns out it was the correct amount to do. Um, I actually intended to add that to the center front, but I hecked it and put it on the back instead. And hilariously, that was the correct decision because now I maintain the shape of this center front neckline, which otherwise would have been a mess because I would have messed with the like size of the shoulder shafts and I would have had to like alter in this way, etc. And then here is the stomacher. It doesn't have any boning or anything right now. It's just the piece cut out. And then I've pinned everything into place right here. And here we have the uh, almost uh, effectively finished petticoat and pocket hoops, of course. But the thing is that I will probably add like a half inch to a one inch hem on this guy. Probably not much more than that. I'm thinking honestly a half of an inch because I prefer the looks of the longer petticoat, but I think I might maybe make it go up to an inch on the side because the sides are a little longer than the front is. But honestly, that, that seems like a lot of work. I might just do half an inch all around and call it a day because ain't nobody going to see those sides because it's going to have the gown on top of it. This is also the moment where I'm realizing that I did that thing where I made the entire petticoat out of the actual fabric like a like a rich bitch and I should have just done that thing where I use like miscellaneous fabric here and then like faced the hem but it's a bit too late for that oops it's fine also the pocket hoops are fun because I can do this and then they pop out they, they pop out god Naturally, they didn't do the thing when I was trying to demonstrate how they did the thing. But yeah, we got some funky creases going on in here from how it's been folded in a pile on the ground for the last 24 hours. But I'm just gonna like give it an iron up here so it'll all sit happy. But yeah, I'm so excited. It's real. I couldn't really figure out how I'm supposed to evenly smooth this down and pin it 
once again to the lining underneath without skewing this and stuff. So I have created a genius plan, right? And the genius plan is this. Now I know that this pattern repeats. So this repeat goes down to this section here. So I'm gonna mark this and then I'll know that this should all be on the same line. Then I'm gonna go under, I'm gonna go under, and then where I've pinned this section here, I'm going to sort of mark that onto this base fabric underneath and draw the beginnings of that line and then use a proven line to follow that line down my lining and then match this up along that line. Does this, does this plan even make sense? I'm, I'm really doing my best to try to like think with portals and stuff. I, this is the scary part. Once I finish this, the rest is gonna be smooth sailing. I say, not really believing that because I still have to make like a pound of trim, but trying to believe that for the sake of my own sanity anyway, it's all good, it's fine. So in today's list of achievements, I've officially pinned down the pleating, like the Watteau pleat back panel onto the lining. I specifically pinned it along the sections where I'm going to sew it down onto the lining. So I'm sewing down all of these lines here up until here because this pin marks about where this gap portion ends so all of the stitching should stop above that gap and then I like cross stitch it onto the bottom I think according to the AD book and I also like smoothed it all out made sure like everything was lined up and then I pinned under here which is going to correspond to if you can see my line of pins here. And that is where I'm going to tack the pleats down onto here so they kind of like stay contained in this section of the back. And this is also what makes sure that this fabric here stays smooth on your side when you wear the gown so you can like have a defined waist while also having all of this floof. So these are all pinned where I need to sew them, except I don't want to sew them right now. So instead, I cut out the front panel and am pinning that in place. Also, I'm covered in these little little bits of fibers and my pants are velvet and this is just, this was a mistake wearing these pants right now, but that's, getting these plants clean is a future problem. But look at my pants, they're fun. Hey y'all, so I got into the zone yesterday and stopped recording, oops, but um, good news, good news, we did a lot of progress. We have the back panel fully attached to the lining and we have the front bodice panel fully attached to the lining. I started to cut out, um, or rather I cut out the sleeves and I cut out the stomacher pieces and then I started to cut out the front two fabric panels and then I cut them on the wrong direction on the fabric and then I cut them again correctly and then I was like you know what actually no we're gonna stop tonight because it's 2 a.m and clearly you don't know how fabric works anymore so you're not allowed to sew right now and mess stuff up so here we are it's tomorrow morning and I'm going to finish cutting those front panels and I'm using the trick in the 80 book of cutting a 20 inch wide panel and then like goring it and flipping the section etc etc and then I'm going to make my stomacher and I'm gonna make my sleeves and I'm gonna attach the sleeves onto the bottom and then I'm gonna do my next fitting in other news I ended up fully hand sewing the stomacher together except for boning because my brain decided that whip stitching this by hand sparked more joy so uh here we are. Is this all going to get covered in trim anyway? Yup. Did I hand sew a lot of things that are going to get covered in trim anyway? Also, yup. Well, but you know what I'm going to do now? I'm going to not hand sew the hem of my petticoat because that that's, that's too long. I'm going to pin it and sew it by machine. No, thank you. I once again uh, did a bunch of work without recording because I got in the zone, but uh, we have sleeves. The sleeves are on. We have the finished stomacher that I showed you guys before, and we have all of the skirt panels attached, and it is time for the final fitting. So this is where I got to last night, and you're probably like, Nami, that does not seem to fit that mannequin right, and you're correct. This is a duct tape dress form of myself from like seven years ago, so of course it doesn't fit. That being said though, I was able to like contort myself and flip the sleeves on myself, and somehow they're just like flat with no pleats. So I'm like, 
cool. Okay, sure, whatever, good enough. And I serge the edges of the sleeves here so I don't have to just, I just don't have to worry about it. I tried to fit the skirt on myself, but that was like a disaster and like weird twisting. So now I'm gonna retry it and fit it on the mannequin and then try it on myself with all the pins in place to see if it lays correctly. So that's the current plan. We're gonna do our best. Yo, look how real this gown is right now. So sleeves are fully on and I, I uh, just wanted to try them while they were basted in place before I put the shoulder strap on. So the shoulder strap's gonna go on top of this and cover everything up. And the position that I had pleated the skirt in seems good. So I'm gonna sew it down. The one thing that I didn't like though is how I folded the center front. So I folded it back to give it more of a shape, but it wasn't back enough apparently. So I'm gonna fold it so it like comes out right, you can't see my toesies. So it comes out like right here. So it makes that V in the front, but I'm not going to sew that down until I do my next fitting and make sure it looks good. I'm really happy guys. And also this is a record for me. I still have three full days before I have to leave. And on top of that, I then have two nights where I can hand sew. I, I almost have a full dress already. This is wild. This is a record for me and I'm, I'm proud of me. Also, this is the jewelry I'm going to be wearing with the final gown and I'm very excited. So I sewed on this binding on the top section because this, this section is way too thick to fold back on itself. And you can either bind this top edge or just fold it back. And now I have pinned on the shoulder straps and I'm going to stitch those, stitch those on. And then I'm going to sew on the other front panel. I actually already I already sewed on this side and that I got distracted by doing shoulder straps. So um yeah, we're just gonna we're just gonna finish finish the rest of this and then the dress is out. I stabbed myself on all these pins. The dress is gonna be officially wearable and I'm going to recover all of the pins that I have stuck in this because my poor pin cushion, she is looking naked. She is she naked, we have to give her back her clothes. This is a PSA for idiots like me who decide to mark their fabric in Sharpie because you know what? Sometimes, sometimes you need to sew past your markings and you know what happens then? You have Sharpie on your final garment. Ugh! I'm gonna go to sleep, it's like 2 a.m. So I have created one sleeve ruffle and she looks like a silly, a silly jellyfish and I love her. I love her a lot. I'm going to make her some friends soon so she has some company because she seems very lonely, but I enjoy her immensely. 11 out of 10. I recommend making sleeve ruffles just, just for your own spare time funsies. So I just sewed on my lowermost sleeve ruffle and I realized that um, somewhere along the lines, I seem to have apparently stabbed myself because we got a little blood on her. Where did it come from? I don't know. Cause I, there's, there's no blood on my hands that I can spot, but she, she has been, she has been officially bled on. Huzzah. Also look at her, she's so funny. She looks like a horseshoe crab as Kaz so helpfully told me. <laughs> funny, I love her. Y'all, it is departure day. I need to leave for my flight in about two and a half hours. We do have a fully assembled gown with a neck tucker up there. Although the, um, there's, there's the petticoat, she's sitting over there. But yeah, so gown is fully ready. All of that is good. Now I'm just doing extras. So if I have time to tack these on while I'm on vacation, I'll tack these down. They're gonna be ruffles eventually. And that'll be awesome. If I don't have time, no sweat. We good, it's all cool. But yeah, so I'm just gonna assemble some ruffles to, you know, give myself a little hand sewing project if I have the time, but uh, no sweat. I'm so excited, y'all. Guys, it's coming together. Or rather, guys, it came together and now she might get extra bling because we have time. Huzzah! Here it is, the pile of trim that I have made to put on the dress if I have time. Will I have time? Hmm, but it's real. It exists. The possibility's there.
guys so much for tuning in to watch this video. If you can't tell, I did end up getting some trim onto the petticoat and some bows onto the stomacher. 1000% that was all made possible by Christine because Christine, lovely, lovely, sweet so Steen sewed on the petticoat ruffle for me, which was just very kind and generous of her. She also made me my enjants and sewed those in for me as well. What a sweetheart. Like, I don't think you guys understand how sweet Christine is. And so she helped me with that. The bows on the stomacher, we both sewed the trim to those pieces of fabric in the hotel room. And then I assembled them and they're actually just safety pinned on the stomacher right now. My my hem on that gown is safety pinned in. Is anybody surprised? I'm not. I will definitely go back and update this at some point. Hopefully I'll make a video about it in a couple months where I trim the whole gown because that is still a thing that needs to happen and I want it to happen before the next time I wear it. But also I don't have any 18th century events that I am going to be wearing that gown for planned for this year. So it's currently on the we'll do it at some point eventually list, which is always a fun time. So basically until I have a deadline for that, it's probably not gonna happen. And I'm probably gonna rewear it to Versailles again next year. So that means catch a follow-up video in May, 2024. Oh man. Well, yeah, that's, that is that. So one thing I do want to actually talk about really, really quickly is why I went to Versailles in the first place. I know a lot of people view that party as like a very elite party. I love Fates Galants and the idea of it because it basically spits on everything that the old French aristocracy would have wanted. Like Versailles was an exclusive place for the rich, for the aristocrats, and the fact that the everyday person that exists now is able to go and show up there and just be on the grounds and party. It's basically a giant metal finger at them. And I'm always Always about flipping off the extreme rich. That being said though, you know, obviously it's still not an accessible event for everybody and I definitely understand that, especially if you're American and especially if you're not European, getting over to Versailles in the first place can be really expensive and even though the tickets for the event are not crazy expensive for what you're getting, this hobby isn't accessible for everyone. It's absolutely a fact of the matter. So I understand that some people look at that Versailles party and they're just like, oh, we'll never be able to make it there. It's not really right that people go. But I think it's my responsibility as a woman of color to show up in places Places and show up to parties that would have made the aristocracy of the old fully full body cringe. It's my it's my job to go to those places and be like, ha, I'm in your space now. Take that. Look at the hatred that you tried to build. See how you failed. That's that's what I want to continue to try to do. TLDR, the reason I went to a party at Versailles, which most people would look at on the base level and be like, oh, you just want to party like it's the 1770s. And um, no, no, I very specifically want to party like it's 2023 and laugh at the French aristocracy of the old and be like, ha, huh, look at me, a whole ass not noble person of color who was just in your palace drinking champagne, having fun. Take that. That's it. I hope you liked my TED talk.